Welcome to Get Paid for Your Pad, the definitive show on Airbnb hosting, featuring the best advice on how to maximize profits from your Airbnb listing, as well as real life experiences from Airbnb hosts all over the world. Welcome. Don't wait for the day after check-in to get paid. Visit payfully.co to learn how to get paid months in advance for your upcoming bookings on Airbnb, VRBO and other platforms. That's payfully.co. This week in the world of Airbnb, my name is Jasper and I'm hosting this episode of Get Paid for Your Pet with David Jacoby, co-founder and president of Hostly. David, how right. are you? I'm doing well, Jasper. How about yourself? I'm excellent. I'm excellent. Still holding down the fort there in Amsterdam. Still holding down the fort. Almost back a month. So it's been fun. How's life in San Francisco? Life in San Francisco is great. Lots of fun stuff going on. I know you and Margo talked about the changes here in San Francisco with the legislation. So there's been lots to talk about here. We've had our third mayor here in San Francisco in third mayor in like two months. Unfortunately, the mayor passed tragically of a heart attack a couple months ago. And then there was an interim mayor. And now there's another interim mayor. And then there's going to be an election soon. So lots of stuff going on. Never a dull moment. And of course, all those zombie listings have been removed. There's really a lot less Airbnb listings, a lot fewer Airbnb listings now in San Francisco, isn't it? Yes. But it's hard to tell the impact that it's had on the registered listings right now. It's, you know, not that busy time. So we'll wait till the summer and see how things pick up. But a lot of people are kind of saying that the people who were against short term rentals, they've always been saying this is going to decrease the rental market here, the rates that is the affordable housing is such an issue here in San Francisco and Airbnb is a primary cause of it. So we need to have these laws in place, and then the rents will go down. So now everyone's saying, hey, the rents aren't going down, you promised they'd go down, maybe Airbnb really isn't the issue. Maybe there's bigger issues at play that affect affordable housing, like needing to build more housing in general. So we'll see uh, the repercussions of this, and it might change the argument significantly in other cities as things unfold. Yeah, I mean, I think there's definitely bigger factors at play. The rising rents, I mean, the rents have been rising for a long time in San Francisco. Isn't that true? Exactly. There's been a quote-unquote affordable housing crisis here long before Airbnb was around, and they barely moved the needle. They were just a really good scapegoat, and I think people are going to realize that soon now that this law, which is pretty big, you know, kind of like what's been happening with you in Amsterdam and then other places in Europe, so now it's gone into effect here, and I don't think rents are really going to change, so... That really goes to show that this wasn't much of an issue. Mm. So what's going on with Hostly? I heard you guys have uh, some big news. Yeah, big exciting news. We merged with Orbi Rental. So we couldn't be more excited about that. For those unfamiliar with Orbi Rental, they are another software in the vacation rental management industry, essentially a property management software and booking engine. So they help you manage your listings and keep track of where all the reservations are coming in from. They have direct channels, we now, on syncing right to Airbnb and Booking.com and TripAdvisor and HomeAway, so the big four, as well as lots of other sites. So for those looking to expand outside of Airbnb, now you can do that pretty easily. And the calendars are all connected and the pricing is connected. So, you know, you get a reservation on Airbnb and it will update your calendar on HomeAway. You want to change something in your description and it will change your description on all the sites that you're connected to. And then you can easily track your reservations and communicate with them. And we've been partners with them for well over a year now, and we've just gotten along great, and it's a match made in heaven. Our products are very complimentary. So the Orby rental side of things focuses on getting the reservation and managing that side of the guest. And we focus on, after the reservation is made, providing a five-star guest experience with a beautiful digital guidebook. So now the thinking is a reservation gets made through Orby rental. Orby rental manages it, processes it. You have automatic emails that go out to the guest and 
The email can include the link to the Hostfully guidebook that gives the guests everything they need to know about how to get here and how to check in and favorite recommendations and what the Wi-Fi code is. So it really is a complete tip-to-tail software now to manage your your vacation rental. Awesome. Well, congratulations. Sounds uh, like a good match indeed. Thank you. We couldn't be more thrilled, and we've gotten a lot of positive feedback from people in the industry. It's been great seeing users that already use both of us saying, oh, my God, I love you both, and I'm so thrilled you're together. And then just other positive feedback from users of one of us saying how interested they are in checking out the other. So it's been an exciting time the past couple Is there going to be an actual wedding party? Yeah, here in San Francisco. We're going to have a big celebration party in, in a month or so. So come on out, All Jasper. Right, I'll wait for the invite. <laughs> well, let's see what's going on in the world of Airbnb. I think the first thing I noticed recently is that the way that the pictures are displayed on Airbnb listings has changed a bit. It used to be the case that the first picture was always shown. But now recently, and I don't know if this has been rolled out all around the world, but the listings that I'm looking at, I see two and sometimes three pictures even. Yes. When I'm kind of logged into my computer, I still see it the old way. But if I bring up a new browser incognito mode, then I do see what you're talking about. And that is a pretty significant change. But usually in the past, they've kind of been known. I've thought of them as being really design focused. Obviously, they still are. But having one big, beautiful picture was always very striking. And now the way it shows on my screen, it not only does it show two pictures, but it starts showing like half of a third picture. And it's definitely a different approach that I need to get used to. Yeah, it seems like the bigger your screen, the more it shows. Because I was looking on my big trading screen earlier, and there I was seeing like two and a half pictures as well. I think it, it depends on your, the size of your screen. But the funny thing is the first time I saw it, I thought, whoa, this house made a collage of two pictures. That's really smart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't realize mm -hmm. that was actually the default, uh, the way that Airbnb displays it. Mm -hmm. I think the general thinking is pictures is such an important part of making a reservation and Airbnb realized that from the beginning and they keep playing around with how they want to present it. One thing that they've always talked about was a kind of aha moment that Brian Chesky and Joe Gebbia had when they visited New York was that all the pictures were pretty poor that people were taking. So they started taking them with their nice camera and that led to being able to offering free professional photographs for many people in, you know, in many regions. They don't offer it everywhere. And they've played around with it a lot over the years. I remember a couple of years ago for a little bit, they would have like your first four or five pictures at the bottom of your listing kind of featuring it there. And now they're kind of moving that right up front and center with a, a link to view photos right away. So I think their testing probably shows that the more guests, potential guests look at photos, the more likely they are to book the place. So by showing right away a few different photos and that there are many photos available to look at this listing, that's just getting them to where they know they're going to convert more quickly. You mentioned the photography service. That was a service that had been free for a very long time, but I believe that's not free anymore. I think you have to pay for it now. I never actually saw an actual announcement where they announced that, but I think it's definitely not free anymore. Do you know anything yeah, about that? Yeah, I vaguely heard something that they changed it maybe to $50 in certain areas that you need to pay. Maybe it's different in different areas as well. But I got it free, and that was like four years ago or so when my listing first went up. Yes, I have heard it changed. I don't know the details. Right, but go, let's go back to the picture. So I think actually it's a good idea to show multiple pictures, but I think it has some consequences for the way that you want to organize your photo portfolio. Now, I've always said that it's a smart idea to show different categories of your house, sort of, you know, one picture of the bedroom, one picture of the living room, one picture of the neighborhood, etc., and not have the pictures sorted by category, at least for the first, you know, five to 10 pictures or so, because you want to be able to sh give people a chance to really get a good impression of your house within the first 10 pictures without having to scroll through, you know, let's say picture number 25, 30, or 35. That's become very important now. So for example, you know, I'm, I'm checking out some listings in, in Miami and I see a lot of them, they start with two pictures that are almost identical. So you, you know, you're just looking at the bedroom and then you're looking at the bedroom from a different angle. Now that doesn't really add much value to have that second picture there. So I think now it's definitely important to make sure you got your two best pictures of your listing, the two most attractive ones, the ones that feature 
really like the reason why would people want to stay at your place? Maybe it's the view, maybe it's the garden, maybe it's the roof terrace, maybe it's the living room, whatever it may be, to really pick those two best pictures. Yes, absolutely. It's interesting that they didn't send a notice. I guess when they A-B test this stuff and make small changes, it's not huge announcements, but it would have been cool if they emailed everyone saying, hey, here's what your listing now looks like. And we're featuring two and a half pictures right away (laughs) in in case you want to change it. And what you suggested is absolutely what I do. I'll have one picture of my living room and my dining room and my kitchen and the bedroom and the outside of the house and my hostfully guidebook. I put that in my listings to let people know that they get a, a beautiful guidebook with their stay. And I put all that right away. And then I'll do three more pictures of the bedroom and three more pictures of the of the living room and kitchen and stuff like that. For those that have still made it that far and they want to deep dive into it, but it is important to mix it up right away. And I realized that especially when they did the change a few years ago where they had like five pictures at the bottom of the listing as a little taster. And it was, you know, clearly bad for people who had five pictures of the bedroom. And that was it. Gets you thinking for sure. I'm not sure now though, (laughs) if I'm going to personally change my order because I already had my favorite two or three right away. So now that's going to show right away. So I don't know if there's any implication for me personally or other hosts that have thought about this. I'd also, yeah, definitely. while we're talking about this, I give a quick shout out to Brian Green from overlooked to overbooked. Dot com And that's the number two. So overlooked, O-V-E-R-L-O-O-K-E-D, the number two, and then overbooked, O-V-E-R-B-O-O-K-E-D.com. And he's got a really cool website that's dedicated specifically to your photos and how you can take beautiful photos with your smartphone and what you want to think about while making the photo section of your Airbnb listing. Airbnb has changed the way people rent forever, but actually getting paid is still a pain. That's where Payfully comes in. Payfully is a safe and secure way to get paid for your upcoming reservations within 24 hours of them being booked. Payfully deposits directly into your bank account, with funds typically available within 24 hours. Payfully works with all the major platforms, Airbnb, VRBO, Guesty and others. They've helped thousands of hosts expand their business, cover unexpected expenses, and stabilize their income. Visit payfully.co for your first request free with code GPFYP. That's payfully.co, promo code GPFYP. Let's move on to some of the news this week. I I didn't see that much, but the news item that's really dominating this week is the departure of the CFO of Airbnb. He has left the company and then somebody has been promoted as well to COO, I think. Yes, big news indeed. So Lawrence Tassi, he was the CFO, people call him LT. And he came from a background of much larger companies. He was at Blackstone for a while, and he was brought in specifically to help them go public. And I think the general belief was that he was going to stay here through the IPO. So this is definitely a surprise and a shakeup. A little different from I know what you and Glenn were talking about on the last episode with the bringing in of the CEO of American Express onto the board. And yes, this is definitely signs are going to go public soon. And then this announcement happens and it changes gear again. And Brian Chesky, he's usually pretty coy about when they're going public or not, but he realized he had to approach that question head on with the announcement of LT leaving. And and he made it very clear that they're not going to be going public in 2018. So it'll be at least till 2019. It gets pushed back once again. And yeah, Belinda Johnson, she has been there for a while. So he's promoting internally. This is the first chief operating officer. She's overseen many of the legal issues for years and has been navigating that path very well. Her big focus was on taking a little bit more of a conciliatory approach with the cities and kind of negotiating a little bit more instead of being so hard lined. She's been a real trusted advisor for Brian Chesky for a while. So yeah, big changes over there. Yeah. And I, I think there was a news item a, a while ago that the CFO and Brian Chesky, that they weren't really getting along, that they had different views of, you know, what the future of the company should be. And so this, you know, behind the scenes, maybe this was the writing was on the wall that this was going to happen. But yeah, like you said, <laughs> you know, all the signposts seem to be 
pointing towards an IPO soon, and that's now completely blown out of the water. So I guess we, we don't have to talk about that uh, <laughs> anymore anytime soon. But also, I, I noticed that Brian Chesky said that Belinda and him had different views as well about how to handle things. And that was one of the reasons that, that he wanted to promote her and kind of partner with her as a CEO. You know, she's obviously going to work a lot with Brian Chesky. So I thought it was interesting that, you know, the other guy kind of left because they, they were clashing. But then he also promoted someone that he, you know, has different viewpoints with as well. Yes, I agree with you. He did make some comments about how, not necessarily that they always disagreed, but maybe they had different ways of thinking about an approach to a problem and that he learns from her every day, I remember him saying, and he's he's a better leader because of her. I think Belinda gets Airbnb more and gets Brian more. She's been there for a while. And LT, having this background from big companies that he's taken public before, or been public before, he had a bit more of a traditional route. So this goes in line with the big announcement Chesky made a few weeks ago about being a 21st century company and really, you know, swinging for the fences with his dreams. And just to be clear, like a specific example that there were rumors about some tension was with regards to whatever this flights things is going to be <laughs> that Brian's been teasing for over a year now. And LT wanted to have a more traditional integration with like companies like a kayak or an Expedia or a Skyscanner or something like that, where you kind of just plug in other available flights and, and you can monetize upselling airfare through that. And that is not the way Brian wants to go. Who knows what that's going to be, whether it's going to be his own airline or just a co-branded thing or, or something a little more hands-on. But I think that's kind of a, a clear differentiation between LT's general big company, more conservative thinking, and Brian's, we're still private, we don't need to be public yet, and I can do what I want and swing for the fences. <laughs> yeah, and I'm actually very curious what his plans are with that airline because you know he says he wants to change the way that people fly. And, <laughs> and whenever I go to an airport, I, I always kind of imagine what it would be like if you could just you know board an airplane just the way you board a train. You know where the airplane is kind of like shows up and there's like a ramp and then like people walk out and then people walk in and you just fly away without having to deal with all this stuff at the airport. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I am imagining when he's talking about, like, I want to start an airline. I'm going to change the way we fly. That's kind of what I have in mind. Yeah. Who knows if that's going to be part of the big announcement coming up? I think he mentioned in the letter about being a 21st century company that on February 21st, maybe, there's going to be some big announcement and there's lots of speculation around what that is. I have a feeling it's going to be a combination of a number of announcements of upgrading the experience in general for the host and the guests. But there's definitely going to be one or two, kind of like what Steve Jobs would always say, oh, and one more thing. And then he'd like bring out the iPhone for the first <laughs> time or something like that. So if anyone has any ideas what you think it's going to be, let us know. It could be a conversation for our Facebook groups and stuff, and we'll see what happens. Right. So, well, there's not a lot more news, but I did see a couple things in the Facebook group. And some people were asking about what type of amenities should you offer to your Airbnb host. And one person posted a link to an article in Quartz that says you can earn $10 more per night on Airbnb just by having a hairdryer. <laughs> this is something that Nathan Blacharczyk actually said at a conference last year. They actually did some research and listings with a hairdryer you know, can charge like $10 more per night, which is funny because that was actually the first amenity that I bought. He says, you know, it's kind of like an obvious thing to have a hairdryer unless you're a male who doesn't use a hairdryer. And then when you have your first female guests, you know, that's when you realize, okay, I need to have a hairdryer, which is exactly what happened to me. I also saw a picture that was posted that has the top 10 most important features of an Airbnb listing. This is from a while ago. I just never saw it before, so I figured I'd bring it up. You know, number one, I think it's pretty obvious. Number one is location. Number two, price. Number three, reviews. Then it's photos. So I'd say like those first four are pretty obvious, right? Those are kind of like the big four, the four most important factors that take in mind before they book something. Then after that, it's overall feeling, property type, type of property, amenities on number eight. And then impression of host is kind of all the way down there, which that surprises me a little bit. I would think that, you know, when you're staying with somebody in Airbnb, you do a little bit more, you know, research into who you're staying with. And your impression of the host would be a big factor, but apparently not. Other answers were it varies by trip and other. Figured uh, it'd be fun to mention that. Do you want to comment on it? 
Uh, a hair dryer, extra ten dollars. That definitely seems like a worthwhile investment. Yeah, <laughs> that actually is one of the questions I get the most. Even though it, I do include it in my listing, of course, not everyone reads every detail, and and I get asked fairly frequently, "Do you have a hair dryer?" So it's definitely good to have that worth a small investment. Stuff that's easy to replace on the food side. I'm a big fan of having some non-perishable stuff, like some oatmeal, for example, as breakfast, or having a bottle of wine, something that I can stack and I don't need to worry if I have it for you know a month or two uh, before I, I bring it into the listing, as opposed to fresh fruit, which requires me to be a lot more hands-on and on. And for hosts who can do something like that, all the power to you. But I like having a system in place that makes it easy. And then if you really want to go all out, there's delivery boxes like the guest box and stuff like that. That's the guestbox.co. And they have this beautiful box that you can get that has all sorts of amenities ranging from cool toothbrushes and razors and some nice snacks and and other stuff that a guest will need for their trip. That's definitely for those that have a more higher end listing and and really want to provide, you know, six star hospitality. Do you think those guest boxes, do you think those companies are doing well? I never really heard much about it. Well, it seems like there's a few of them out there. I'm most familiar with the guest box. I've tried that myself and I think it's an incredible product. And I saw them at the Vacation Rental Managers Association conference in Florida last year. And I think it's a great idea. And the intention too of this guest box is for the guest to take everything home with them. So you kind of have a new box for every guest and it's a nice little gift you're giving them. And it's got all these cool little samplers from these different high-end companies that are happy to basically give little samplers to all these guests as, you know, free samples to try to get the business. So it's kind of a a win-win all around and it's a cool idea. So I think the verdict is still out, but I kind of like them. Yeah, I just wanted to mention it because I've seen multiple companies pop up in the last couple of years, but I've never really felt like anyone was breaking through. Anyone was really having a lot of success, but who knows? Guestbox.com, I'll check check them out as well. Yeah. Oh, dot co. Okay. (laughs) All right. Thanks for joining me today. It's uh, been a pleasure to speak with you. Always a blast, Jasper. Thank you. And of course, for the listeners, thank you for listening. On Monday, there will be another episode of Get Paid for Your Pet. 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 Get paid for your pet.